This is a planet technically called a Torrid Mini Neptune. Now, there's nothing really that special about it, but what makes it special is the planetary system that it's in because its star is a very unique one, and I wanted to kind of reveal that to you guys right here. Check this out right here. This gigantic star, which our planet is orbiting extremely close to. Let me just give you a little sense here of exactly how crazy this is. I'm going to keep backing up. Sorry if you're watching this at night and it's completely dark, but let's keep zooming out. This is a carbon star. Carbon stars are a special type of red giant star that has an unusually high amount of carbon in their outer layers. Carbon stars are in a late stage of stellar evolution called the asymptomatic giant branch or AGB. At this stage, the star has expanded significantly and has a cool outer atmosphere. Surrounding the core is a shell where hydrogen is fusing into helium. Outside the hydrogen shell, there's a layer where helium is fusing into carbon. The star switches between burning hydrogen and burning helium in these shells. And there's something called a helium shell flash, which is an intense burst of helium fusion occurring every 10,000 to 100,000 years. During the helium shell flash, the star's outer layers expand and cool, causing convection currents. These currents bring carbon and other elements up from the core to the surface. As this is happening, the star loses mass through strong stellar winds, and especially during helium shell flashes. Over time, the star sheds its outer layers completely. The expelled material forms a glowing shell of gas and dust around the remaining core, known as a planetary nebula. After losing its outer layers, the hot core of the star is left behind, and the core becomes a white dwarf, about the size of the Earth, but with the mass of the Sun. And this slowly cools over billions of years. So because of just the makeup of a carbon star, you can see here that this planet, number one, because of how close it's orbiting, you can see it's kind of stretching out a little bit. The gravity's pulling at the planets a little bit. And the second thing is because of the amount of infrared radiation emitted by carbon stars, there is quite, let's just slow down the time here. There's quite a lot of um, activity at the poles, aurora activity at the poles, as you can see. Slow it down here, right here. There's one of the poles. You can see just a ton of radiation bouncing off this planet. And with how close the star is, I mean, that's just insane. Absolutely insane. The next planet we have in the system is right here, and this is classified as a torrid Jupiter. You can see it's experiencing the exact same kind of thing with its um, awkward shape there. And if we take a look at where the star is located here, you get a sense that it is a little bit farther away, but not quite. Um, you can see the graphics kind of messing up there, <laughs> making it look like a big old, big old white floating potato. But anyways, this planet is a lot like a Jupiter. It's classified as um, as such. And if we just turn up the speed a little bit, you can see how fast the storms, you know, just like Jupiter. This is actually, I believe, 200 times bigger than Earth. Now you can see some of the moons, as this one's coming by here, some of the moons on uh, this planet are really interesting. There's a lot of tiny little ones floating around here, you can see, but there's a lot of, uh, kind of let me see if I can grab that guy right there. Without us going all the way to another galaxy. Let's freeze the time up a little bit. And uh, let's try to land on this. This is a Torrid Airless Mini Carbonia. Down there. Now you can see again, because of the heat experienced by the star we're at we're looking at 1500 celsius so it's incredibly hot on this planet or i mean on this uh this moon here and if we actually go take a look here's a little uh sunrise i guess you could call it a terrifying sunrise but a sunrise nonetheless of uh the carbon star now you can tell as we're going and nothing's really changing here we are tidally locked so this is a torrid airless mini terra so you can see that the uh the probably the intense solar radiation from this star has ripped away all of the so there's no atmosphere here so unfortunately we cannot have any signs of life but one of the interesting things is and let's go to another planet here 
So here we have a Carbonia planet, so mostly carbon. This one has a little bit of an atmosphere, as you can see here. And one of the moons, if you zoom out, is very close. Very close. You can tell it's also got a lot of the uh, uh, the aurora happening. That's probably from the star. Again, a terrifying view if you're on the actual planet. Go and uh, take a view down here. That would be your sunrise, so horrifying. Um, and you can see that the atmosphere on this planet is it's completely red, and that's all because of uh, probably the redness of this star here. So this is this is a horrifying view of this planet. It looks like you're, you know, <laughs> this looks like you're on. I have no idea. It's like doom, like this, the basis of doom, and then you have this gigantic star rising over you. Now I know in real life this would probably be blinding and you wouldn't be able to see the potato-ness of it, but uh, either way, um, a terrifying view. Now because of the carbon and because of the, the carbon that's emitted from the star, this planet is, let me just check the temperature here, it is 1,000, 1100 degrees Celsius, so you can tell that the um, you know, you got, you got kind of a Venus situation going on here where you have a greenhouse uh, gas, and because it is carbon, um, the gas emitted from the star, it's even more crazy. And tons of storms you can see here, a lot of storms happening. Uh, one of the interesting things to think about is because of the amount of carbon emitted from the carbon star, is that, you know, some of these planets will be seeded with so much carbon that... You know, just like this one, because, they're, you know, you can tell everything's black, right? Like the, the whole planet is pretty much black. And that's because the main elements on this thing is carbon. So um, to think about life on this on in this world, right, in this planetary system, although, you know, the game's not telling us that there's signs of life. And obviously with the, the amount of, you know, heat and everything that <laughs> these planets are experiencing and the, and the radiation from this crazy massive star... Um, maybe there is a chance for life in different ways and maybe that life is just different kind of than what we think of if that makes sense to you because maybe you know maybe life in these planets is just straight up pure black from carbon carbon based life forms but that's kind of where it starts and ends who knows right there could be multiple multiple different things here at work um, so what makes this very unique system even crazier is the fact that this carbon star is not alone. It's actually part of a binary system. I want to show you that. And what makes that even crazier is that it's part of a binary system with a black hole. Let's go over there to this black hole. You know, fairly nearby. There it is. Um, you know, look at that. So there's our star. There's our carbon star. And here is the black hole. And together, these are forming a binary system and you can tell that this black hole I mean if you look up here all of the different amounts of planets that this thing has captured it's got to be pretty crazy um, you know we can get real close and see some real crazy stuff but uh, you know the black hole what do you guys think of that I think that the black hole could also be part of you know this system story with the amount of gravity it has maybe it's pulling some of the planets closer obviously this carbon star is able to capture planets but part of the reason i think why there's not many that far out is because that's why everything's so close is because the black hole has kind of captured everything that would have uh that would have you know been left too far out so you know that's saying let's go to the farthest planet in our system which would be this guy right here this is as basically as far as it goes this is a hot mega neptune so it's an ice giant but a hot ice giant and you can see our uh, our star right here there's a little bit of an atmosphere here you can see there's our star there and if can't really tell where the black hole is but somewhere over there the other the other thing about the black hole you know you gotta wonder is that could it be pulling planets into the system? And then is this star big enough to capture the planets? But as far as the future of this system, I think uh, the most obvious, you know, here's another mini Carbonia, which again, 
This one has a faint, very faint atmosphere, so. Could one day life be livable? With, with such a massive uh, star? Now, the sad thing for the system is ultimately the end of this will be the star sheds away all of its outer layers and will only be left with a tiny little white core and become a white dwarf. Uh, which white dwarfs are pretty crazy because they are the size of our Earth, but the mass of the sun so that's how intensely powerful those are so that will be this guy's uh this fate and you know when that happens this star will also shed so much material carbon and everything else that it will create a, uh, a planetary disk around it so really the you know as far as could their life be in this system it's not probable but I think it could still be possible. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please uh, like this and leave a comment. If you have any cool systems that you want me to explore and check out, uh, by all means, uh, leave that. I thought this was a really cool one, being a binary system with a black hole and a unique carbon star. This goes to show you that uh, in the universe, could be anything out there. Anyways, guys, till the next time.